is oh that's on hi okay yeah hi so uh, we're from the Robert McLaughlin Gallery who's heard of the Robert McLaughlin Gallery before yeah no way no put your hands in who's been to the Robert McLaughlin Gallery before okay so you're not going to get so this presentation is going to prove to you why you need to come visit us we've just done the highway and. Uh, we're going to kind of elaborate on our RMG Friday event, which is very similar to First Thursdays, but um, we're a small to mid-sized community art gallery, so here's our take. So my name is Nora, uh, I'm our uh, volunteer coordinator and gift shop manager, and I'm Jackie Severs, um, I'm a communications and social media manager at RMG, so you may have guessed from these titles that neither of us really do public programming. Not except for RMG Fridays. So um, this project has been our baby. Our baby. <laughs> so uh, the Robert McLaughlin Gallery, um, also under the strategic planning, and this project was sort of something that came out of that. Um, our statement of purpose is behind me on the screen. Uh, but one of the things that really was um, essential with our strategic planning was engaging our communities. and. Um, similarly to the AGO, we um, really wanted to find ways of engaging students and young people, um, youth. We have um, a growing university population in Oshawa. We have um, Trent University, UIT, Durham College, and now there's a Queen's University campus in town as well. So we knew that there was an audience there that we wanted to draw in. Um, and that's really how we got started. So it was initially conceived as a Friday night event called First Fridays. It was sort of a unfortunate story about why we don't call it that anymore, but it happens on the first Friday of the month. And the original concept was to have two live bands um, and a cash bar, and we would invite youth to come out to the gallery, and that's how it started. So this all launched uh, February 2011, so we have seen uh, our, our second anniversary has come and gone. And in February 2011, uh, this program was supported by an Ontario Arts Council Arts Investment Fund, and that really provided the seed money for a four-month program. Now, the, the, the money ran out. Four months came and gone. We couldn't stop. We couldn't just stop it. So uh, it became a, a bottom line in our budget that RMG Friday would continue, and it has continued. Um, it, really became a staple in our local culture diet, and it became something that uh, people couldn't say no to it anymore. So we move on to, uh, you can see behind me some, some kind of, uh, some examples of what we do from around here. And who, who was coming out to the events? So who was our audience? As Jackie mentioned, the program was originally hopeful and hopefully created to, to foster a youth engagement and that happened, but it wasn't the only thing that happened. We were overwhelmed with the support that we received, and our, uh, our surveys actually showed that over 25% of our guests were under 24, so okay, not bad, but 42% were between 24 and 35. So this is that like target market, um, that kind of like mid-range, maybe not the students that we were hoping for, but those who wanted to do something on Friday night and take off their weekend. The balance was 35%. I have yet to take a picture of it, but it has existed, of uh, a student in a mohawk and a woman in a walker beside each other at an RMG Fridays. It exists. So um, half of our audience was also new to the gallery. They had never, ever been here before. They had never seen us before. They didn't know we existed but they had come to visit us. Um, and a really important point that I, I'd like to mention that is that our, our I guess our like audience, I guess our, our like, we've maintained the same interest in the program since the beginning, despite the growth in the program. So like, people are still interested in coming, despite how, yeah. Yeah, anyways, let's move on. So, as I said, there's a community need. So, the community has, has really developed, and we've become the hub of, of this event. And we've also partnered with, um, I guess the, like the next logical step would be to partner with local organizations, businesses, local restaurants, the city, the mayor, the mayor's behind us in one of the pictures, revealing sculpture. 
you know, it, it's the natural cause of the event is to add and value added experiences to local businesses. Also to community groups and to student groups. We had the largest student group at UOIT partner with our event. They're called HER. It stands for Hip Hop in its Essence and Realness. And they came, performed in our gallery space with artwork behind and like brought in a fashion show and did their thing. So it was nice to be able to like reach out to different community groups and be able to say, hey, we have this thing that happens on this night. Do you want to come? Do you want to join us? And they said yes. Um, and this has then led, obviously, to word of mouth. Word of mouth is the number one way that we promote this event. Over 50% of people have said that they've heard about us through friends and family. So it's just another way to, to value that experience. So. Obviously, volunteers and staff are a concern. The event started with just Jackie and I and a few UOIT students. That was it. Then, as the program develops, we have increased audience. We can expect about uh, 200 attendees any month, which is great for us. And that really created a need to have a member of our curatorial team on staff um, at the events. Uh, enhanced security, so extra security guards at the events, and then also really increasing the volunteer participation in the event. So we've seen a 200% increase in volunteer support and volunteer engagement because of RMG Fridays. There was nothing that existed before this that was able to facilitate a volunteer who wanted to come in the evening, who wanted to come after hours, who wanted to maybe complete their hours for high school or who were professionals looking to get involved. So this really created that niche market and has really seen uh, a great increase in our volunteer support. Next. So um, maybe it seems a bit backwards, but we sort of realized into the first year that um, because we had this amazing audience of people coming out all the time that we should add our openings at our two Fridays. Um, we hadn't ever thought to really combine it that way. Um, and in the top corner here, you see actually the hip hop crew doing their thing in front of an incredible Douglas Walker installation. And we had the artist's um, approval to host the event in his installation. Um, and then this and that, we had so many questions that people were really interested in the art on the walls, which, is, which has been the truth all the way along. But it, it, it sort of took a while, I think, to get curatorial to the idea that maybe this young audience who are you know, primarily 25 to 35 years old also want to have an artist talk while they're there, or also want to hear a curator speak about what's on the walls. They were just there for the social event. Um, so we've added um, art openings, and now most of our art openings actually happen on the first Friday of the month at these events. Not all of them, but for the most part, they're there. And it's that amazing benefit of having, um, you know, especially we have, we, stuff, we show mostly contemporary and modern Canadian art. Um, so you might have a, an artist coming in from Pizzetta Rowan, for example, who's having an opening at the gallery in Oshawa. They don't have a built-in audience. They don't have their friends and family to come to their opening. They don't necessarily have huge recognition in the community. They maybe do nationally within the art community, but not in the local community. So that artist would have, all of a sudden, they have an audience of 200 people to listen to their art talk. So it's a fantastic experience for them. Um, and it's, it's great for our audience. So we're adding them, we're adding them more and more, and um, we are going to be launching what we're going to call Nutshell Tours, which are little 10-minute tours to specific items in our collection or specific parts of the gallery um, as we go forward. So that, that brings me to the curatorial perspective, which is obviously a factor. Um, when, you know, in one gallery space, we have a, a live band performing with speakers up on there and sound equipment and guitars and drums and um, art on the walls, and then you put, you know, 200 to 300 people in the room drinking wine. Obviously, this is a concern for curatorial. So, as Barbara mentioned, we've added curatorial staff on hand at all of these events. Um, we started to survey, I guess, about their interaction with the art. Um, but I think what's really come to the agreement amongst all the staff is that it's actually an excellent um, way to bring new audiences to contemporary art. And um, it doesn't matter if they're just there for the social reason and to have a beer. They actually also ask a question about the art on the walls and engage with that. That's a huge benefit to the gallery. In the long term, um, it's worth some of the risk, um, yeah. even if a, a 
a piece of work has to come off the wall in the middle of an event and go into storage. And I think they've gotten smart about it too. The, the curatorial team, when they reinstalled our permanent collection, um, they put strategically uh, placed certain nail holes and like hangers on the walls that they could easily remove a piece and then have a, a new piece easily in, reinstalled into the gallery space. Um, for some of the more um, precious collection pieces, uh, the availability to, to transfer those out was, was there. Uh, you might not get the full curatorial experience, but you're getting a, a pretty good example of that. We also um, use some of the funds we raised at this event to buy um, stanchion and security, lower stanchion, so you don't feel like you're roped off from a section of the gallery, but it certainly discourages people leaning on the walls or getting close to the walls. Um, so we have a totally different um, sort of set of challenges in the sense that we don't really have a marketing budget for this at all. We have an extremely small budget to pull these on top in and of itself. So um, that's one of the biggest challenges we face. So one of the benefits of community partnerships is that in some cases the community partnerships can help us um, raise funds or, or they can contribute to the funds for paying for things like bands and sound and security and licensing and all of that sort of thing. Um, and so that's been a huge benefit. So we're always seeking those partnerships and sponsorships. Um, and because we have a, basically a zero marketing budget, um, it's one of the challenges to get the word out about what's coming up at future events. Um, but we have found um, social media and marketing online and word of mouth has become the most important way of people finding out about the event anyhow. Um, it has a better response than traditional media marketing anyway. So it's sort of a challenge and a benefit and we're always sort of seeking new ways of getting the word out. So that comes to the question of why is RMG Fridays free to attend? RMG Fridays is a free all-ages event, and um, we, coming back to our strategic plan, we're very focused on being accessible. Um, our gallery is a suggested donation gallery, so it's only $5 suggested donation to come in. And we felt that putting a price on the event would be placing a barrier with our community. Um, young families, um, young working adults don't necessarily have the budget to risk putting 5 or $10 dollars on something they're not sure what they're going to get. And we wanted to really bring those people in who don't come to galleries anyways. They don't know what they're going to get. They don't know whether they're going to enjoy the experience. And charging them 5 or $10 dollars might be a barrier to their decision to come. So we felt it was really important to make sure that it was free and it stayed free forever. Um, and so that's, um, that's basically our reasoning and we'll keep it going that way. So, and just to wrap it up, we um, have our first Friday in May coming up, and um, it's actually a, a good example of um, uh, a first Friday, with, or sorry, an Armory Friday with um, lots of different things going on. We have two live music performances. Um, one of them is the band from Toronto, which we tend to do is mix um, local and um, sort of larger GTA locals. So we have a band from Toronto and a band from the local community. Um, we also have a, an opening of an exhibition of uh, photography, and then we also have an opening of a, a, a jury a poster show, which is our second annual um, call for entries for young designers who design posters to advertise musical events. And that was tied in with RMG Fridays and has become a really popular um, aspect of the event as well. So it's the second year that we're doing that, um, has some crazy um, rock and roll posters being shown at RMG Fridays. Um, and so when we combine all of those different events in one, you can imagine how many friends and family hear about it, how many people want to come, and uh, it should be quite the blowout. So we'll see you on the first Friday in May. We'll see you there. Mm -hmm.